Hello everybody, I hope you're all well and it's so lovely to see so many new faces and familiar faces here too. We've got quite a mixture today and I truly believe that everybody is here for a reason. And um, We were just talking about how everything happens for a reason and I know for myself personally that this workshop has come at the perfect time. So welcome everybody. My name is Zena Kula. For those of you who haven't met me before and those of you who've forgotten what I'm about, <laughs> I am a mompreneur mentor and coach. I help mom entrepreneurs to sign clients consistently. That's what I do in the coaching space. In addition to that, I'm a mom of two beautiful children, um, a four-year-old who's just about to start on the crazy adventures of school, and a one-and-a-half-year-old who's quite the sassy pants in my family, um, and definitely gives me a run for her money. And um, I'm also a professional bugger dancer, so I wear a few different hats. One of my hats is being the coordinator for these wonderful workshops where I get to experience meeting some amazing speakers, who are really putting some incredible tips and tricks and expertise out there into the world for us all to learn from. And today's workshop is all about how to make peace with your deepest emotional pain. This workshop is being held through Koshalia UK and for those of you who are new to Koshalia UK as a platform, it's a registered not-for-profit charity um, community organisation working to empower and uplift women. It's growing organically in leaps and bounds under the dynamic leadership of its founder and CEO, Miss Ritu Sharma, who has dedicated her life to bringing women of this world to find their own power and their true worth. Welcome to our awesome speaker today, which is none other than the CEO herself of Koshilia UK, Ritu Sharma. And Ritu has embarked upon quite the journey of life and to deliver such an amazing topic, I couldn't think of anyone better than Ritu to actually deliver this information to us and really help empower us further in our lives and in everything that we do. Um, but to really handle that deepest emotional pain and how to make peace with it, that's, it's a fantastic topic, Ritu, and I can't wait for you to share more on it. So over to you. I was on mute. Thank you so much, Zina. Thank you. Appreciate the wonderful introduction that you've given. Um, and yes, rightly said, Kushila UK is all about supporting uh, women on their journeys, personal professional journeys, whatever it is, whatever little we can contribute. That is what we do here on at Kushila UK platforms. Tonight is about a very heavy and serious topic, which is very sensitive as well. And I am 100% on board with the understanding that it is a very sensitive spot to even touch. Disorganizing is it, demantling it to organize it again is a big job and we definitely are not going to achieve everything in this one hour that we're going to talk about. But if we make a good start, if we make a little start, if we can take one step, half a step, I would consider it a huge success. So I'm going to get into this without talking any further. Um, my screen visible to everybody? It is, Ritu. Sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to say if you're um, able, if the rest of you are able to just pop your speakers on mute while Ritu's talking, just so there's no interference and everyone can follow what Ritu's um, sharing with us, that would be amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, so here we go. So um, this is what we're going to talk about how to make peace with your deepest emotional pain. My name is Ritu Sharma and I am a women empowerment ambassador and that's what I do basically. So my professional background is that in teaching, I was a secondary science teacher for quite a while. Um, my teaching career lasted for about 20 years in 
India, where I'm from, as well as I continued here as a qualified teacher. Um, and it, it's almost 20 years that I was in teaching. And then, of course, I went through um, a journey of my own, which woke me up, gave me a few nudges, taught me a few things. And I realized that that is where my true calling lies. So I went, went on to start this wonderful organization called Kushila UK, which is named after my paternal grandmother's name, Kushila Devi, because I see her as a powerful, strong woman. You'd, you'd find me talking about her everywhere, anywhere, and, you know, whenever I speak about my journey. I started a theatre production company, uh, which is called Surkar Productions, and we produce plays again around subjects that are taboo, that are sensitive, that need educating people, and that is what we do. Um, we are an Amazon bestseller. This book, The New Woman that you see on the screen, that was published in 2021 under the umbrella of Kushili UK, and it was an Amazon bestseller, and it included 33 powerful women from across the world to be precise, it was 18 countries, five continents, all ethnicities and backgrounds. And I'm very proud of this project. Rich Man's Poor Daughter was my first book that I wrote and I logged my personal journey in that book. The title itself tells you that I was in deep emotional pain when I wrote that book because of the journey I have I've had and all the letdowns and the deceits and uh, the traumas that I had to face as a little child, as well as a grown woman, they are all logged in there. The good news is that I'm relaunching that book under the title of Rich Man's Rich Daughter soon. I also found a um, cultural organization. I'm, I'm a woman of color and I'm very proud Punjabi woman. That's my only identity, if anything. And so I needed to honor my roots and Luna promotes Punjabi heritage, culture and literature with the, all the work that we do under this. So that's a little introduction about me um, at professional end. Now, who am I, if anybody, to talk about pain? Who gave me the right to tell anyone, you know, I can show you how to make peace with your pain. So you see a few couple of pictures on on your left, it's on my left side, so maybe on your right, but you see a few pictures, a collage on the on the screen. And that is me at different stages of my life. And I was quite lost as a child and as a young person. And I carried on being lost when I was a grown woman, a married woman, and had cultural implications, which made it even more difficult for me to, to be me and to pursue what made me happy. And there's loads more. There is a story that I lived, which is around honor-based abuse, domestic abuse. I have a huge mother wound. Um, and if you don't understand the term, it is when either you don't get the love and the affection and the bonding from your mother, or there has been something really difficult happening between you know yourself and your mother. And because mother is a key relationship in any human being's life, it becomes really difficult for anyone to live through that wound and also to experience that pain. I'll just make a side note here that it was easier for me to make peace with all other pains as compared to the pain I experienced from my mother wound. That was the hardest. I have ever dealt with and I think I'll ever deal with in future as well that this was it for me and I think my biggest question for the first 40 years of my life was if my mother could not love me am I even worth anybody else's love if my mother did not see any worth in me am I even worthy am I even lovable probably it's me probably I'm not 
And then when you start rummaging through the layers, you know, of the background of the story, where she came from, what her dynamics were, what her experiences were, were what her expectations were, et cetera, et cetera, where the timeline that I came into her life and all the factors that were there, that kind of um, laid laid a foundation for me to build my peace. I have also experienced quite bad mental health episodes where twice, once at the age of 21 and second time at the age of 36, I was seriously suicidal. And the first time I did make an attempt, I was saved. And I totally believed that God's thing was, you're not going anywhere, woman, you've got work to do on this earth. So I was saved and I carried on. I have experienced homelessness, domestic abuse, have been through a really messy divorce, have been a single mother, you name it, you know, a, a normal woman's journey. I've had quite the lot. And therefore, I think I do qualify to talk about how to make peace with your emotional pain because I've lived through that. And not just this, I have gone on to do some courses and qualifications as well to be able to speak others. And here we are. So let's just crack on. Enough about me. So pain. What is pain? Pain predominantly would occur due to two reasons, one or the other. It's either some person in your life who has wronged you or done something to upset you or not being nice, basically, or done something that was beyond your expectation. So normally when we're looking at a person, we're trying to mirror a person if we are dealing with somebody I would never do something like to them. So why did they do it to me? I would not never treat anybody like that. How dare they treat me like that? So what we're doing here is we're trying to mirror, we're trying to see our image in the next person. So we get upset when a person does not act according to our expectations. And for the record, we are human beings we are okay to have expectations. I know your sages and saints and gurus and they say to you, don't have expectations. While we may learn to manage them very efficiently when we are at that stage, but a normal human being is okay to have expectations. So let's not beat ourselves over that. Or it's a situation that's caused anything, some pain to you. And that situation, again, could have occurred because somebody did not act or it could be some sort of grief, bereavement. It could be some sort of illness. It could be anything. Life is so wide and huge that it's almost impossible to even understand everyone's pain. There are so many portals that bring pain to us as human beings. We can't even touch upon all of them. It's all individual. Second question we should ask ourselves, because some people pe feel pain more intensely as compared to others. They're labeled as sensitive. They're labels are labeled sometimes as drama queens. And, you know, why are you making such a fuss over that? Actually, I was, it was said to me when I published my first book, Rich Man's Poor Daughter. People from my community were asking me, like, you know, this happens to every other woman in our community. What's the big deal with you? Why are you making such a fuss over it? I felt pain differently to how other people may feel pain. I also processed it differently to how other people may have processed it. And that is absolutely fine as well. So when we accept that pain is normal, pain comes to us to teach us something. Whenever there is pain arising from a behavior of a person or a situation, there is always a lesson in that. Let's just try and get this in. Let's just absorb this, that this pain is not 100% bad. Yes, it troubles you. It causes you trouble you know, turmoil, it, it does not let you live in peace for a while unless you learn to make peace with it. 
but the pain is certainly directing or trying to direct you in a certain way. And your pain is different to another person because you are your own person. We're all individual beings. And of course, you must have heard this from so many different people that our DNAs are unique. We're all unique people. So if our DNAs are unique, we are definitely not going to respond to pain exactly the same way as everybody else. Now, the biggest question comes to us is, what can I do to make peace with it? And that is what we are going to talk about. The F word, not the naughty word, the F word, feelings. How do we see our own feelings? Do we acknowledge them enough or do we shut our windows and doors to them when they pop up? What is it that our generic approach to our feelings is? Do we give ourselves a chance to acknowledge that feeling and say, okay, I'm feeling sad today and I am feeling sad because of this particular thing. And then when you acknowledge that, that is when you can actually start to process it. But before you do that, it is almost impossible for you to move on from that nasty feeling that you may be having within yourself. Feelings are normally either thought of good or bad feelings. So if somebody is sad or unhappy, would that be a good feeling or a bad feeling? So put, the, put it in the chat. Let's put it in the chat. Would that be a good feeling or a bad feeling if somebody is unhappy or sad or upset or angry? Bad. Right? Yeah, Zina, bad. Kavita, yeah, bad. Bharti, bad. Of course, not great. Bad feeling, but a real feeling. Okay, bad, yeah. So, so this is how our brain basically works. It's a bad feeling. No feelings are good or bad feelings. Feelings are there for us. Feelings are there for us to get indicated towards something. So the feeling is trying to indicate towards something that needs changing or needs accepting. We assign a meaning to them according to our own programming. I'm upset, so it must be so bad that I have to hide it. I'm angry about some very particular thing that is not right in so many different ways, but I've got to keep a match done and I must not express my anger because it's a bad feeling. And when we continue to do this, when we continue to tell ourselves that this is a bad feeling and I'm a bad person for having this feeling, that is not serving you a good purpose. If we just accept a feeling for a feeling, okay, um, feeling sad today and this is the reason I'm feeling sad today okay it's okay I'm feeling sad thank you very much for coming I'm feeling sad that's why I sit with that feeling let it be there then say thank you to it and then maybe let it go it's difficult to say thank you to a bad feeling to good feeling it's easier but maybe try that and once you catch yourself doing this that I'm sad and it's not bad and I can still express myself. I'm angry, but it's not a bad feeling. It's just a feeling. Like when we are happy, we'll go out all smiling and all beautifully dressed up and it's all fine. Nobody checks with you. Why are you so happy today? Maybe they do if you're grinning too much. But people kind of are more accepting of happy feelings as compared to sad feelings. What I'm trying to say here is let's not judge ourselves for feeling a certain way. Let's just take a feeling for a feeling and not read too much into this. Before I go on to this, I want to oh, I want to go on to the salesman story, the story of the salesman. You may have heard of this before, so if it's a repetition, I apologize, but let's just talk about this. There was this salesman and he was very good salesman. And he used to walk up and down the streets, knocking on people's doors and telling them about their product, the product that he was selling. And then 
he would explain what the product was. Some people would answer the door and he would explain to them. And some people would not answer the door and he would walk away. Now, when he walks away, he's a salesman, right? He has to, it's his job to make contact, to tell people about the product, even if he can't make the sale, to tell them what it's about. So he'll come back and he'll knock on the door again. And then if the person would not open the door the second time, he would walk again, walk away. Then he'd come back the third time. So let's imagine you're the person who's not answered your door to this salesman. And this salesman is a particular feeling. This salesman is carrying a lesson for you that you need to know about, that you need to be informed about. But because you're not opening your door to the salesman, to that lesson, he keeps going away and then he keeps coming back. The lessons that we need to learn through our pain are exactly like this salesperson. The lesson would come and knock on my door. The lesson could be that of patience, forgiveness, you know, acceptance, whatever the lesson was. The lesson would come and knock on my door. I did not open the door. I'm too worried and scared to letting that lesson in. I send it away. I don't answer. The lesson walks away. The lesson comes back again in some other situation. Knocks on my door again. Unless I open the door, let the lesson walk and say, thank you for your information. The lesson will keep coming back. This is one basic reason for our pain. When we don't accept the lessons that we need to learn, the lessons will keep going round and round and they'll keep coming back and they'll keep knocking on door. Can you think of a scenario where one particular lesson, I mean, you don't have to share it. You can share it in the chat if you feel like it, but you don't have to. But can you think back and think of a lesson that, kept coming back to you and eventually you may have had to um, accept it or you may not have accepted it but can you think of something that would present you with a situation time and again to accept something but because you refused to it would go away but it would come back again if you thought hard i promise you there have been a few lessons that have come to you more than once. So this is what it looks like outwardly when we are in pain. Sometimes you don't even accept that we are in pain. Sometimes you're in denial. And I've seen so many people, unfortunately, who are in denial rather than accept it and acknowledge it and work on it. So they'd be tired most of the time. They would not want to engage with friends and family They'd be upset, they'd be irritated very easily and not motivated and they feel really down and low. And if that carries on, let's say, if this looking like this and being like this carries on, of course you'd agree with me that it would have a detrimental effect on one's mental health as well as social life, relationships, and everything else. And yes, when we're in pain and we don't want anybody to talk about this or we don't want to talk about it, the other people may be aware of this, they may not be aware of this, but we cannot expect them to understand our pain 100% if we are not making that effort ourselves. Everybody okay? Does anyone want to say anything before we carry on? Everybody good? It's all uh, so true, Ritu. All the yeah. things that you mentioned, what it looks like. Mm. It is because, yeah, I've been through it and I can see all of them. 
and identify with all of those feelings too. So thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. I think Kavita had a hand up as well. Kavita, if you want to unmute yourself, you wanted to say something. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, Kavita. Yeah. Okay. So for me, if I substitute the word with lesson to, uh, let's say, situations then that holds good for me more. That's fine. Maybe I'm not, I'm, maybe I'm not as, uh, in this journey, I'm not as advanced as you are. But what I feel is that uh, the same situations in my life come back again and again. And like you said, I'm not learning. So it's like the salesman example yeah. you're giving me. That's right. That's right. Thank you for this. Yeah. And, and it's Thank fine. You. I mean, it could be lesson, it could be situation, but whatever we need yeah. to learn from there, accept from okay. there, that's what we need to focus on. True. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kavita. Anybody else would like to contribute before we carry on? Okay. Jazz, yeah, please, Jazz, go on. Am I muted? Or... No, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I was going to say exactly the same thing. I've just literally just joined. But um, when you just turned around and said, you know, when we have to give our friends and family, you know, they can see our anger issues, trouble eating, motivating ourselves and feeling guilt in ourselves. And it is a hard thing. And um, like the lady who spoke before, um, it is like a roller coaster over and over and over again. And we as women, we think, when is it ever going to end? That's right. You know, and it never ends for us because we're continually just working, working, working as a housewife, outdoors, coming home, then dealing with our personal issues. It's just never ending game. And it carries on and on. And it's like a massive burden on us. And then when people turn around and say, there is help out there, where is the help? Hmm. Because to be honest, for nine years, I have not seen no help. I've just had burdens after burdens after burdens. I mean, like my ex-husband is walking around freely. He, he has got nothing to be worried about. You know, there's, there's uniform to be buy. There's food to be put on the table. What contribution is he putting? Zero. Absolutely zero. And we as women, we put a big massive smile on our faces and we're like, you know what? We're soldiers. We can do this. And when there's a yeah. massive upfront and we carry on and on and on. Absolutely. But, you know, and it's like when it when when do we have a speech? When do we have a word? Because they say, Oh, we have a spokesperson to speak for us women, but yes, people talk about it, but is anything being done? No. Mm. There's I nothing been done. I second that, Jess, that um, because we are naturally nurturers, women are nurturers, right? And that's inbuilt in our system. But also the society doesn't help by, you know, adding on to that with now also we're responsible for earning as well as doing everything else that we were already supposed to do. And I hear you when you say that your ex-husband and things related to that, because that is unfortunately also a very common practice here. Yeah. That women end up taking responsibility 100% for children because they can't let their children down um, if their husband has or ex husband yeah. has. But, you know, and my story is no different to yours, yeah. Jazz. And yeah. for a very long time, I mean, kids grow up, things get easier in a way, better in a way. Uh, but, but whatever breakage, you've gone through and whatever you're handling now mm -hmm. that piles up on your psyche and yeah. yeah and and you need to the good thing is that you're here and you are already looking to to make it better for you help there there is loads of help there but unfortunately it's not financial help it's not the kind of financial help shall we say that a single woman would want as a mother. And I've been through the same journey. I know Nirmala has been through the same journey. Some other people may be able to relate to this. And 
it's both ways. One, you've got to keep telling yourself you, you can do this and you will be okay. And you've got to do this. You can't let yourself down. You can't let your children down. But again, I'm not denying the fact that it has an impact on, on your mental health. Oh, no. And then, yeah. Yes. And, and therefore, this, this comes in where you learn how to deal with this building of baggage because all of us have it. Right? No. Agreed. Agreed. But I mean, I'm not talking about like financially, but when I'm yeah. saying, when we say less time with family and friends, I have to say, if if it wasn't for my father and my mum and when they saw me when I was black and blue, if they did not let me inside their house, I would be living in the streets right now. Hmm. And if it wasn't for their support, I don't think I will be the woman I am today. And I wouldn't be the mum I am to my child today. So I have to say thank you to them in many, many, many ways. Absolutely. Uh, but... As when we talk about financially, yeah, my ex-husband does say a lot of things to my little one when he has contact with her, like virtually and in in a supervised contact. And he turns around and says, if she says um, a small little thing, and he'd be like, right, I'm taking you back to court. I'm going to get tell social services that you've been rude to me, you've done this. So when she comes out of this and she says to me, mummy, You've never turned around and said that to me, that, oh, I'm going to tell social services. I go, because you've come out of me. Social services haven't birthed you. Courts haven't birthed you. I'm the one who birthed you. So if I have to discipline you, it will be coming from me. So mm -hmm. you can just see what kind of father he is to you already. So ignore what he, when he comes to saying these bickering little things. Just ignore it because he just not, does not know how to be a parent. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're doing the right thing. And I'd say you are blessed to have support from your parents. Many women do not get even that. So Second. it's beautiful. Yeah, go on. Go on, Nash. Were you going to say uh, something? No, sorry. I was I was getting very emotional with that. I had to say it. I, I think, the, I don't know who was speaking, the lady's name. It was name. Jazz. Jazz. Okay, Jazz, you are very lucky to have Thank good parents. You. Honestly, you are blessed to have good parents and then you have to play the role mo model for your children as well as your parents did for you. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, that's that's one, one way I could turn around and say to my little girl that I'm sorry that you don't have a Superman in your life like how I did with my dad, but I'm kind of glad that she has an uncle and she's got a dad who – well, my dad, who actually teaches her the right to how to be a woman of today. Because to be honest with you, my dad didn't raise me like a girl. He raised me like a boy. And he's like, there's a world out there where you have to be such a tough nut and you've got to be like a coconut, which which is really tough. And if you can be a tough nut out there, then I know you're my daughter. And that's the same thing what he's teaching my little girl right now as well. So... I can't turn around and say that my dad has not raised me like a princess, but um, he's raised me like a a true soldier. So I bless can him. bless him. Yeah, more power to him. More power. To him. Oh, and all the best to you. Keep going. Keep going. It's going to be okay. okay. Keep going. Right. Oh, someone said exactly what my dad taught me. <laughs> Shall we carry on then? Yeah. Okay, dokie. So why are we so stuck? So studies have shown us that societies do not sanction grief. We internalize it. We are not encouraged to talk and discuss about things that may be causing us pain and the standards um, and regard our emotions and reactions as, as less legitimate. So even, you know, when Jazz was talking about how her little one now has got a role model in her own father and she's there. So you know how structurally, on a social level, we are taught that families are supposed to be a certain way. There's got to be a mom, there's got to be dad, there's got to be siblings and the rest of the family and whatnot. Families, unfortunately, and I feel safe saying this, that families, unfortunately, are not the structure, the ideal structure that is shown in uh, movies and Disney films. And although we'd love that if we could, because that's how we've been programmed to think. And as I mentioned before, my major pain came from my mother wound where I had 
zero relationship with my mom and i could not just understand how is that possible because all the films and all the songs glorify mothers and mothers are the biggest figure in your life and they're supposed to love you unconditionally and and the rest of it but i had none of that and therefore i was in loads of pain because of that for the first 40 years of my life got needless to say that most of the times i continue to blame myself because as a child that's what you think you think you're not good enough um i had a sister who's very pretty who's beautiful and very lady like and she was a very daddy's girl sort of a character so i thought because i'm not like her that's why i'm not loved because i i have certain interests i'm outgoing i'm outspoken maybe that's why they don't love me so everything was wrong with me as i say earlier when i started to dig into the into the layers of where they came from what their situation was when they had me um what happened to them with them for them i kind of started to forgive them um let's move to the next bit so oh we've done this so this is this is really huge any situation any pain any person that comes to you with a lesson i think there are only two options basically on a very basic level that we have one is to accept it if we can and if we can't accept it the only other option we're left with is to get up and start working to change it i don't think there's a better third option because you then would certainly be in a constant pain forever if you could not do one or the other so if life when life presents you with something and you challenged by it there are basically two things you can do one or the other either accept it or change it and both need work accepting something that is painful and against your idea of right and moral is definitely going to cause you a lot of learning and a lot of acceptance and a lot of pain as well before it settles in this is something that mm-hmm. we can start with when we trying to make peace with our emotional pain this is something very basic and very powerful self talk we we are always talking who who talks to themselves in their head i do that constantly very yeah very regularly very very regularly i i suppose all of us do that and when i was little i used to actually speak talk to myself loud as well looking like a nutter <laughs> but now i kind of keep it inside but i do talk to myself a lot and that is how we think and that is how we make decisions and that is that is how we process our thoughts now have you ever stopped to think how is it that i'm talking to myself that is so important because that is the foundation of everything of how we are going to present ourselves to the outer world also how we are going to stand amongst other people and how we are going to operate and this is something i found out a few years ago and i absolutely fell in love with this and this is what also resonates very personally with me see if it resonates with you and take what you need taken and change it where you need changing it So the lowest level of self talk is harmful self talk where if i drop something or i don't do it very successfully i'll tell myself i'm rubbish i'm useless i'm good for nothing i can never do anything right would you ever speak to a little child like that if a child made a mistake in front of you you try and tell them oh it's okay you tried it's okay let's try again you'd be nice you'd be sweet to them you'd be protective of them so there's no reason you're so harsh to yourself catch yourself out the next time you say this to yourself if you talk in yourself down catch yourself and and replace it with something nicer level 2 is recognizing that something needs to change for example very generic example let's say if you were a smoker The first level would be oh I I can never give up. I'm so addicted to it I can never give up. The second level would be oh I really need to change my habit. I really need to give it up. And then you start telling yourself. So when you catch yourself out talking yourself on level 1, I'm rubbish, I'm no good, I'm this, I'm that, I'm the other. 
tell yourself, no, this is not right. I need to change it. I can't speak to myself like that any longer. Level three comes in when you make the decision to change. For the smoker, it would be, I am going to quit. And you tell yourself, I am going to do better. I am learning. So that's your decision to change. I am going to work on myself. I am going to work on making peace with myself. The better you. And this technique, it's very simple, but it works. When you start telling yourself, oh, I am great. Even when things don't go 100% to what you would, how you would like them to go. And you give yourself some appreciation and tell yourself, oh, no, I did really well. I tried really hard. She had niggly feeling inside. That would not exist any longer. Because more than the outside world, we are judging ourselves more and worse. And I don't need to ask anyone, maybe if you just stop and think in your feet on your spot, you'd be able to just see the pattern very easily. That this basic thing, problem, starts from how we speak to ourselves in our head. And when you start with the better you, oh, I am fine. I am great. I'm doing my best. I tried really hard. Look, I learned. Okay, this went only 70% well this time, but I've learned how to do it better the next time. So carry on doing that. Mm -hmm. Next one, and the best form of self-talk mm -hmm. is universal affirmation. He said, it's all good. It's all great. It's all looked after. It's all taken care of. When you send these positive vibes outside um, into the universe, they bounce back and they come back to you. So if you're constantly telling yourself, I can't do this, I'm no good, I'm rubbish, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, the universe is sending you situations that are similar to these affirmations. But when you're telling the universe, oh, I'm all looked after, it's all great, it's all beautiful, it's all fantastic, the universe listens and it echoes back what you're sending out. There's a name for that. Zina, do you remember what's the name for this echo that you send out to the universe and it comes back? Do you remember the name for that? I can't remember the name for that. Are you talking about manifestation? Manifestation. There's another term that we use when we say we send something out and it echoes back. Um, affirmations? Sorry? Is it affirmations? These are affirmations. Yeah, probably manifestations, Zina, but I can't think of another term, but it is probably. And it manifests. And... I can 100% vouch for this because I am a living proof. And I've seen so many living proofs. Even on this call tonight, we've got so many living proofs who've done this and achieved loads and loads. This is one thing that I always want to talk about whenever I give a chance to talk about pain and how to heal it and how to make peace with it. Um, if you've not yet read The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, it's a beautiful um, book. And Zina, could you please type in it in the uh, chat so everybody knows what we're talking about? The Power of Now. It's beautifully written. And this is what it kind of works on, making peace, you know, talking about how to make peace. The pain body is a concept I learned from that book. And I'm going to explain to you what a pain body is. Now, I'm a person. I am a 40-something-year-old person. I've lived all these 40-something years and I've had so many different experiences piled on within myself, in my psychology, in my psyche, in my inner core. What happens is whenever I experience some pain today, that pain gets piled on to the rest of the pain I already have inside of me. And then what happens then is I don't just start being sad and being sorry and upset about what happened today with me. I will start with from when I was six years old. And then I'll relive everything from when I was six years old. And this is how life was. And this is what happened with me. 
and this is what this person said and this is what that person did and I was so badly ignored and I was so not looked after and I was this and that and I was so upset and I was just a little child. So what you're doing then is you are activating your whole pain body. Mm -hmm. So that pain body lives inside of me and any pain that I experience, it's piling onto that pain body. Let's say this object is my pain body, right? Mm -hmm. And this object is inside me and it carries all my pain from since I was a child, I was a little girl, and every pain that I've experienced since then has been recorded in this pain body. Now, this pain body gets activated every time I feel some emotional pain. And then this relives the whole experience, making it, making it worse for me. Now, what happened to me when I was six is not happening to me now. What happens to me when I was 30 is not happening to me now. I'm not in an abusive marriage anymore. It's not happening to me now. My children are not four and eight anymore when I walked out on my husband. It's ex-husband. It's not happening now. But because this pain body has the record of everything, when it gets moved, shook, activated, I live the whole pain from the start to now 40-something years. And I continue to do that. And I continue to get more upset and more sad and horrible and feel horrid inside. Now, the technique is this. You can, with your, your true 100% intention, you can separate this pain body from yourself and hold it outside, right? So let's say I have this pain body, but it does not live in me anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do something. You don't have to have an object. If some people are very visual, they need to know what it is. So you can have an object. You can have a glass of water maybe, or you can have a, a, a little doll or a teddy bear or whatever it is, and call that your pain body and put it on a side. So the next time you get upset, catch yourself connecting to this Remind yourself, I'm only upset about this thing that's happened today in my life. I am not going to allow this to get activated and cause me even more pain. This helps massively. This pain body is the reason that we struggle to make peace with our deepest emotional pain because our deepest emotional pain has not happened overnight. It's a piling up thing. It's gone worse over years things have gone wrong and even more wrong and then more wrong after that and we've been storing that here in our pain body i would advise anyone plead anyone to do this if you're actually trying to make peace with something that gives you a nasty anxious niggly feeling inside and does not leave you this helps mm -hmm. so i think that's all the time we have for today and what i have done is spent a few hours creating this little course on um, how to make peace with your deepest emotional pain it's got a couple of my videos and it's got uh, some written stuff that you can print and write stuff on or if you're a tech savvy do it on your computer i don't know how to do that uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this link to that course um, for you to buy. It's only £10. And any £10 that are spent on this course are going to go into uh, Kushile UK's account and that would support the work that we do through Kushile UK. Um, I think that's that. Uh, so if we've got any questions, please feel free to ask that thank, thank you so much Ariti. that was amazing and wow some powerful nuggets have taken away from there for sure i love the idea of having a pain body and talking about that as a separate identity to yourself it's Absolutely. beautiful 
and I haven't quite done that for myself yet so something I'll definitely practice um have you popped that link in the chat would you I'm be able going to, to I'm going to do that Perfect. thank you so much any questions guys and girls I mean girls <laughs> No question, but thank you so much, Richard. That was really an amazing question. I learned so much. Um, and thank you for to, for delivering this, Ruth, because it was just it was amazing. I really got a lot out of it, and I'm going to try the pain body thing tomorrow. Great, Kieran. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Even Rita, when you were, um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. See. I think even when I was, you were saying, oh. Tell yourself that everything's great, everything's going to work. I thought that kind of goes against the grain. Almost you can feel it. We've got into this, well, I've got into a bit of a down the same old tracks, mm. you know, not expecting everything to be fine. And I think that shows how we've sort of got used to, you know, yeah. going on the wrong track with things rather than being a bit more telling yourself everything's great, you know you are great yourself and whatever so Absolutely. something to something to practice yeah. yeah and and you know what sometimes it's just we get in our own ways uh in our own way way more as compared to others getting in our own way if yeah. we boil, boil it all down who is stopping us from doing what we really want to do mm -hmm. it's us mm -hmm. if we really put our mind to something and decide and zena is a brilliant example of that she talks about how you know, being a mother and an entrepreneur and people would say, oh, it's not possible. And she's got young children and she talks about this so beautifully that, you know, if she decided she could not do it, of course she could not do it. Mm. We are our own worst enemies. This Absolutely. Same, yeah. Sometimes we are. Yeah, sometimes we are. Absolutely. But we can be our very best support systems as well. It's just a choice of which one you yeah. want to be. Yeah. It's making that conscious effort to yeah. choose. Absolutely. Jazz? Um, yeah, I was going to say um, about, um, you know, raising pain in our bodies and things like that. Um, where I, when I'm doing meditation with young children and I make sure that I ask them if they can bring like a little toy, like how you were saying, and if they can literally put something in that little toy's ears and whatever they've got, emotions what they're going yeah. through and if they can whisper something in that little ear and just say right my uh, my pain and everything is in that little toy today and i'm going to leave that there and oh, i'm going to oh. and that's um, that's a very good technique for children especially beautiful. that's beautiful thank you for sharing just that's wonderful mm -hmm. it's just the reason i shared it because obviously we as adults we always think about our consciousness and who do we share it with and when we don't even think about young children so I've done a little program with adults, well, actually parents and young children, so where they can do meditation. And in this meditation, it's not only to focus with your mind or anything, it's actually to build yourself as well. And it's, which is really, really hard for like how you're saying for young six-year-olds to build yeah. themselves up, up till then when they go about our ages, when they're about 40 and we're still compressing, we're still holding on. That's right, yeah. And and there's a lot of things we can't let go of. So, you know, and it's constant saying a lot of things to young children over and over and over again. Don't do this. Please don't do that. Don't ruin this. Don't do that. So mm. it's constant, constant, constant. So when we do this little group together, that's when the young children come out with, oh, well, my mummy said this and my daddy said this. Now yeah. I'm trying to make a little teddy. And let's just whisper something in that little ear and say, right, I'm going to leave my problems there and let's go on with the, d with the day. But I thought it might be a little bit um, helpful for adults Absolutely. as well if they can have a little box or something and then they can just shut that box, throw it away and say, right, my problems are gone. And then just go ahead with the day. It is a beautiful technique. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just, we, thank you so much for sharing that because I will definitely be using that. <laughs> yeah. I've got a four-year-old boy who is currently going through a phase of being super emotional when he gets hurt. Yeah. I'm going to try that with the teddy because he loves his teddies too. So I'm going to okay. let you know how that goes. Thank you so much for sharing that. Jess. One second. I'm just going to try and put my camera on. I don't look my best ever. 
at the moment. Um, because my little girl said, "Can you share my little teddy?" So oh. one second. <laughs> um, so this is her little teddy. We call it oh. a buzz. Buzzy Bee? Do we call it Buzzy Bee? Yeah. Yeah, so we call it a Buzzy Bee. So hi. Hi. <laughs> so we call it a little Buzzy Bee. And so these little thorns of the little Buzzy Bee, we just buzz, 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 buzz in the air. And then it's gone for the rest Beautiful. of the day. Beautiful. So that's something for us adults as well. I'm sorry I've done it the best of my day. Or, or you really. look great. Don't worry. You look absolutely fantastic. Thank you. But Thank yeah. you for I'm showing us your little bumblebee, Buzzy Bee. Thank you. Thank you. Kavita, please go on. Yeah. Thank you very much. That was very, very useful, especially for people like us or the ladies or the women like us who have gone through so much in their lives and there is no outlet for them to, you know, actually, there's nobody in this world to who, who will listen to us, you know. My only concern is the emo the emotions and the memories they come back to you again and again That's right. that is something which we even if we have that pain body which you just explained to me but somehow our mind is such that we cannot get rid of those emotions they keep coming back to us that's right and some it's and that's fine we've got to accept that they are not going to go away kavita yes and you know some people would uh, when, let's say, for example, I'm giving a very raw example here. Uh, when they get divorced, they try and shut the person, the ex, out. Yes. And deny his or her existence. And my yes. thing is, there is no way you can unlive what you have lived. They mm. were a part of your True. life for whatever True. long they were. Mm. They lived with you for however they lived with you. You two were together. They are the parent to your child. What kind of parent? That's a different story. But mm. you cannot deny something that did happen. So yeah. acceptance here, I think, is the key. And the memories are always going to be there, Kavita. And yes. they're always going to come back. And But what you will realize is when you start working on yourself, that the intensity that they come back with, that will reduce with time. Mm. But they're always going to come back. Yeah, I, I, it's like the yeah. salesman. So what I do is that instead of uh, I try not to be um, in my time and try not to be empty. Either I'm writing affirmations or I'm doing journal or I'm watching videos, Beautiful. which uh, which uh, teaches me to how deal to you know like today's video. It taught me how to deal with the situation and I watched some other videos by which I'm a better version of myself than what I was yesterday. That's so, all we can do. That's that's yeah, the only thing we can work on. We can do, yeah. And then maybe with that, uh, our experiences will fade away slowly, you know, realizing yeah. that that is not our present. So Absolutely. To live in the present, that's what I think. Thank you so much, Jetu. Thank bless you. you. You're very welcome. Bless you. Thank you so much, Kavita. Bless you. Anybody else? Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. We good? Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. It so it was really brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thanks, yeah. Ritu. Great session. Thank you. Thank you, Nirmala. Yeah. Thank you for coming. She's another she's another power woman here, Nirmala is doing so <laughs> much more. Yeah. For others who are going through stuff. She's lived through DV. She's done lots of things in her life. She was a journalist. She's met the you know high level prime ministers and celebrities and she runs wow awards it happens on the 30th of september and kushila yes. uk is supporting uh, wow awards we do it every year they are such wonderful um you know community awards very unbiased very fair and and beautiful absolutely nirmala thank um, you so much thank you for that plug, Ritu. Ritu was one of our winners and Brenda's been nominated. So come along and right. applaud and support. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Right. Okay, then. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Zina, yeah. do you want thank to you. say anything? Oh, just honestly, thank you so much, Ritu. As you have heard from the feedback, that's been so super powerful. And thank you all for supporting Koshalia UK as a platform. It's because of you guys we're able to put these things on and your feedback is so valuable to us as well. So please continue joining. 
We've got amazing speakers lined up in the future as well, all the way through to December, which is just fantastic. Um, but if anybody here is interested in speaking on any area of expertise, just get in touch with me and would be lo lovely to see if we can help you, give you a platform to raise your voice on whatever area of expertise you are the go-to expert in. So thank you for being here. Thank today. you so much, Lady. Thank you, Ritu. Thank you. Thank you so much, we do, for your time and giving me the honour to come and um, talk to you, all your wonderful ladies. So, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Jazz. Come again. We love having you here. Thank you so much. Excuse me, I have a question. <laughs> sure, lovely. And let me put my camera on. <laughs> okay. yeah, go on, darling. I have a question because my dad has been a very terrible. So it was really hard for... Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> Language. <laughs> Language. Yes, yeah, sorry. I'm very No, sorry. it's okay. What I'll do is I'll stop recording so it does not go on YouTube for us and then, you know. You can ask your question, sweetheart, in a second, yeah? 